Welcome back. The Bronx Documentary Center's fourth annual Latin American Photo Festival will feature large-scale photographs throughout the Melrose community in the South Bronx by award-winning photographers throughout Latin America. Joining us now to invite us to the festival and more is Michael Gamber, co-founder and executive director of the Bronx Documentary Center. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Of course. So the BDC is no stranger to BronxNet, but for those of our viewers who aren't yet familiar or have passed by Cortland Avenue wondering what the space is, can you tell us about the BDC and your mission? Yeah, we're a nonprofit. We mostly teach photography and writing. Um, most of our programs are for teenagers here in the Bronx. Uh, we've got kids from all over the Bronx. Most do come from our neighborhood, but we've got kids that come from the North Bronx from all over. And um, we've also got an, uh, some adult workshops, and then we've got a big program for seniors where we work in uh, senior centers around the Bronx as well. We do um, a lot of education. Uh, we've got two gallery spaces, so we do a lot of photo exhibitions. We've got one of the biggest photo libraries in the United States um, that's open on weekends, so people can come and sit down. We've got about 4,000 photos. Uh, and then we also have darkroom facilities uh, and digital printing facilities that people volunteers can use for free or uh, people can rent by the hour. And it's all here in the Bronx. So we should be very proud of the BDC being in our home borough. Thank you for sharing, Michael. Um, so I'm very excited to see that one of my favorite events by the Bronx Documentary Center is back this year. Um, can you share more about the fourth annual Latin America and Photo Festival? I know you had it last year as well yep. and during COVID as well. Last year we did it out, outdoors. Uh, you know, we did it exclusively. We moved the whole thing outdoors. But since the beginning, um, we usually bring in about 10 photographers from all over Latin America. This year, uh, I think we have nine photographers uh, from Peru, Colombia, uh, Mexico, um, Guatemala, all over. We bring in people from all over uh, Brazil. So um, we've been doing it. This is our fourth year. And um, we try to get the photographers up here. Um, generally, we'll, we'll, you know, help them get visas and, and get them here to New York. This year, I think we have four photographers that were able to come. With COVID, it's been very difficult, um, but we've, we've still put on the festival. And uh, basically we're, we're showing uh, documentary work that we feel you know is important, long-term documentary projects um, from all over to sort of give people um, a Bron in the Bronx uh, a, you know, a greater sense of what's happening, frequently in their own homelands, you know, because a lot of our neighbors um, are immigrants from these very countries. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing, Michael. And what are some of those social issues highlighted through the works of these nine award-winning photographers this year? If you can share. This year, to be honest, it was a tough year. Um, we had a lot of the work was, uh, well, I would say not as cheerful as, as in years past. Um, uh, a lot of the work was not very, you know, upbeat, but we had um, some really great projects from, from Venezuela. Um, looking at uh, the issues with um, petroleum and environmental devastation. Um, we had issues, uh, we have a great exhibition from Chile uh, focusing on the police violence against protesters and the uprising in, in Chile. Um, we've got a great project on uh, from Mexico looking at um, organized crime and violence against women in Mexico, which is, which is a, a huge problem um, as well. And uh, if you go to, um, if anybody goes to our um, uh, bronxdoc.org, if you go to our, click on exhibitions, you can see all the different uh, projects that we have here. Um, Carlos Saavedra has a great work from, uh, great work from Colombia, um, looking at indigenous communities uh, and the uh, Shipibo Conibo uh, people. So there's, there's a whole variety of things here. Um, I think I mentioned the project from Chile and, um, We've got um, Rodrigo Apt and uh, Andrea Hernandez Briseño from uh, working in, in Venezuela. And those are both really powerful, um, looking at healthcare and the political crisis. And I think a lot of these projects this year, of course, touch on COVID-19, um, you know, which is just inevitable and uh, which has really taken a toll both here in the Bronx and in Latin America. Absolutely. And what I love about the photo festival is that you also put excerpts and, you know, a little bit of a bio by the artist itself, and the photographers that are involved in the festival. So folks can walk up, um, you know, admire the work, but also learn about these individual countries and kind of empathize a little more with what's going on um, in, you know, foreign affairs, um, especially with everything that's brewing uh, politically in all these countries. So thank you for sharing. Uh, Michael, how are the artists chosen for the festival? 
Well, we have you know, long-standing relationships in in throughout Latin America. Um, you know, we've we've been doing workshops in in Mexico and different places, um, and we've had photographers from all over Latin America uh, been who've been visiting us here in the Bronx for ten years, really, since we we began. Um, so it, we, we're in our tenth year now at the BDC. So we've hosted. We have a be, uh, a bedroom here that we keep open for for visiting photographers, and we've had dozens and dozens of photographers from again from you know Mexico, Colombia, Peru, um, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico uh, come and stay with us and do workshops and share work. So we kind of have a big network, and and they all keep in touch with us and they let us know what they're working on. And then um, each each of them from the previous years helps to recommend people for the, the next year, for the coming year. So um, usually it's photographers from from Latin America who are really uh, helping to choose the work. That is awesome. Um, so as we kind of mentioned in the beginning, uh, the Bronx Documentary Center, I believe, was ahead of the curve. Um, and I feel like it's now very convenient to have these stunning works displayed outdoors, especially with the pandemic and the way everything has been. What led you to begin curating this festival in this format four years ago? I know that it's also a collaboration with Photoville, who prints the who prints as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right, right from the beginning, when we opened in 2011, um, we were doing projections at our, our opening exhibition in 2011. We were projecting on walls outdoors in the community, and that's very always been very important to really break down, uh, to kind of break down the walls and get the work out in the community. That was that was really one of our organizing concepts. Um, we didn't want to be in a closed space where that people had to go into. We wanted to get out on the street and make a difference and add vibrancy and you know information and interaction um, in, in our community where we all, all live and work. So um, we've been doing that a long time and we uh, started printing huge banners. Um, they're massive banners, um, sometimes, sometimes 30, 40, 50 feet long, uh, just enormous banners. And, and the photos are really big. And right now, actually, as I speak, uh, we're installing some of them uh, along the fences over at uh, NYCHA, the New York, New York City uh, housing projects over here on, on Cortland Avenue. Um, we're doing the banners around the schools here in the neighborhood. We're doing the banners in front of uh, one of the churches, Immaculate Conception. So we've just, you know, we've always done this and we feel it's really important to get the work out to where the people are. And in the Bronx, people are commuting, they're working, they're out on the street. And uh, that's where we need to see the art. For sure. Yes, Immaculate Conception. That's where my mom and I go for church. Uh, so we've been going there for years. And I've seen a lot of the banners there last year. We walked um, past so many beautiful photog photographs um, right. for the photo festival. So, you know, thank you for sharing that. What are your ultimate hopes for the community to take away from these works of art um, on the streets of Portland and Melrose? Well, I think one of the things, you know, uh, we, we're trying to foster more of a, a sense of community. I think we're trying to... Um, you know, people have told us that they feel more connected to their homelands. Um, you know, my neighbors right on my block are from, you know, Honduras and, and uh, Mexico and, um, you know, uh, Colombia. I mean, just on my block, there's people from, you know, probably 10 countries from the Dominican Republic. And so people, you know, they take great pride in walking by work from from their country. Um, and, and they feel like uh, I think it helps to foster um, a connection. And there is such a strong connection here. Um, with, with Latin America and the Bronx. And uh, so we're trying to keep that going. And we hope also, I mean, we're hoping also maybe one day we could do um, a, a festival from Africa because we have a lot of African neighbors as well, you know, so. But, um, you know, we also, if somebody can walk by something and it can brighten their day a little bit, you know, instead of just walking to the subway and, and not seeing anything beautiful, you know, if we can brighten somebody's day and make them feel like they live in a great community, uh, you know, add to that sense. That's what we want to do. Agreed. I love it. Thank you, Michael. Um, I know that you mentioned the Bronx Senior Photo League and the Bronx Junior Photo League. Yeah. Um, for those, you know, who are at home and wondering, you know, I want to learn about photography. I want to learn about film. Uh, do you need any experience to join any of these programs? And how does it work? You don't need any experience and you don't need any equipment. You don't need a camera. You don't need anything. <laughs> we, we, we supply everything. Um, we encourage people to work with what they have if they have cell phones and such. Uh, but we also supply supply cameras uh, to people that are in the program. So um, basically, people sign up for the program. They can either call the Bronx Documentary Center, go to our website, uh, click on education. It's uh, bronxdoc.org. Uh, and if you click on the education tab, it'll tell you about the different programs. Um, and we announce all our workshops on there. 
Um, almost everything is free. You know, some, some things are $5 maybe for, you know, a day long workshop, which is a pretty good deal, but mostly everything is free. And, um, so, you know, we encourage if you if you love taking pictures and, and, you know, you love the community, then we're the place for you. So, yeah, please, please check us out. Uh, oh, sorry, Michael, you were going to say something else. I didn't want to. Well, yeah, I mean, we're we're now we're starting to sign people up for the uh, for the fall program. Uh, most of the summer programs are already up and running. But in September, uh, September and October, we'll be ramping up a lot of new programs. Yes. I want to just quickly shout out the, the students and the seniors, the youth who were featured recently in the New York Times. It was an incredible feat and super proud of our Bronx sites for being a part of this incredible program. I'm super proud of the Bronx Documentary Center for offering this yeah. these programs for our community. Um, you know, just a quick plug in right there for all of you. Thank you and congratulations to all. Yeah, you know, I've always, you know, I always say the talent is here in the Bronx. I mean, there's incredible talent. The, the talent in the Bronx has completely changed America, you know, in, in so many years and in, in art in culture and in, in thinking and in, in every way. Um, but we don't always have the same resources in the Bronx. You know, you go three, three, four subway stops downtown and you see incredible resources and we don't always have those resources. So we're trying to help provide the resources that, so that the brilliance of the Bronx can really shine through. All right, so Michael, there are some upcoming events that you want to invite uh, folks to, including the Latin American Photo Festival. So when is it taking place and what are some other programs that we can participate in? Right. Well, the, the festival opened on the 15th and um, we had a great, uh, great opening there. Uh, there was an event on the 17th, a movie. But what we really have coming up is on July 23rd, um, we have a BDC Conversations with Victoria Raso, and it's about violence against women in Mexico. Uh, really important conversation, uh, July 23rd at 6 p.m. We've got a zine workshop uh, happening uh, with some of the photographers from Latin America on July 25th. And also on the 25th, we've got a like, community street fair uh, as part of the Latin American Photo Festival. So those are great events to come to. And you can walk around, you can see all the work, and there'll be a lot going on, and everything there is free. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Michael. Before we go, how can people support the BDC and stay in touch? Um, well, I would say, you know, the main thing people can do is just um, spread the word about what we're doing. Um, you know, maybe follow us on social media. We're on Instagram. Um, or, you know, you can send a link to somebody that you think might might care about what we're doing. But, you know, really, we're about building community. So anything that people can do to to uh, to get out the word about us is really the, the biggest thing that they can do to support us. Thank you, Michael, for joining us today. And folks, please head out and witness the beautiful photographs at the Latin America Photo Festival, which launched on July 15th. And will be up until when, Michael? Um, it will be up for 10 days up until, until the 25th. Awesome. So we have enough time. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. We'll be right back here on OpenBXRX Tuesday.